design style. And design style is pretty simple. It's basically when you get your message and you define your message and then you define your target audience, you want to put your visual communication, you want to put that message into some kind of a visual form that helps to deliver and convey that message to your audience. So things like your type, art, photos, video, colors, design elements, could be borders, backgrounds, um, they must all help deliver the message to the audience. So all your design decisions are directed by that uh, message and audience, uh, but the outcome of that will be your design style. <clears throat> so a couple of real, um, real basic examples, but very popular examples. So organic uh, and natural has been popular for some time. Um, if we look at these designs and we look at what they did with their designs, you see a lot of textures. Um, I really, really like this kind of woven, um, looks like kind of a grass reed um, packaging here. Wrapped around here looks kind of like uh, raffia wrapping it. Um, real simple, one color, sometimes two color packaging. Here they use um, <clears throat> kind of a cardboard natural fiber packaging. These two I would imagine are pretty uh, expensive, uh, but they really do convey, convey natural um, and that organic feel of the product, meaning organic like back to nature. Um, could also be the organic labeling too from the USDA. Um, another thing you'll notice with this be natural packaging and this is something that's uh, been going on in design for a long time, but I've really seen it pop up in packaging over the last like three to five years. And that would be the use of hand-drawn, very organic looking typefaces. And there are illustrators who specialize in this. And you see this sometimes in magazine articles where they will take the entire title and just hand draw all the type for the entire headline for the article and then watercolor it um, or watercolor it on uh, a real coarse watercolor paper so it has a really cool texture. So what the designers are trying to do is to make the elements of their design look natural and organic and match that same style. Um, as a designer and an art director I'm always um, a big fan of your type and kind of the the feel of your type, the illustrative style of your type, matching the design of your packaging. So this is a good example of it in this Be Natural. Um, another thing we've seen grow in popularity over the last like half decade or so is a company's uh, stewardship and how well they relate to the environment, to the community, to their consumer base, um, and how well they embrace social causes. So do they embrace sustainability? Do they embrace uh, farm to table or farm to store? Um, so these are a couple of examples here from Subway. Um, this is just a big banner ad on their website, um, making change for good, and you have the farmer out in the field, um, and they are supporting that local um, farmer, giving them fresh food. They have this little icon here for our planet, uh, recycling, um, sustainable choices, environmental responsibility link on their website. So all these are important, um, but this is also, from a designer standpoint, this is another way for you to communicate a message using type, art, color, video, design, layout. Um, and this is what um, our part or our role in the process of marketing is. So this is just another design style that we need to convey and use. Now I get that there's a bigger message here, but we're trying to take this from when you sit down at 8 o'clock in the morning and you have to do your job, you have to think about this as a design style, and I'll convey this with my choices of assets, type, color, art. Um, another big one would be seasonal things, Halloween. Um, I thought these were some cute packages. There's no doubt that these are going to be used for the Halloween holiday. Um, they have large illustrations on them, and they use the Halloween colors. 
Halloween colors when I was growing up um, were basically just black and orange. And I remember maybe about in the 90s, you started to see purple creep in there. And then you have a green, kind of a lime green creep in there a little bit too. Um, a little bit more. Um, it's always been a part like that lime green um, of like Scooby-Doo, which is kind of the ultimate Halloween kind of cartoon feel to it. Um, but anyway, Halloween, Christmas, Valentine's Day, you name it, all of these holidays, Easter, they have their own design style. Um, one thing I always like you to consider is um, what, I, what I call appropriateness. And that's if you're designing for Halloween, someone should glance at it and get that, yes, that's appropriate for Halloween. Simply because everyone else agrees that that's what a Halloween design should look like. You can break new ground and you can try new things, but at the end of the day, if you look at it and someone says, um, I'm kind of getting Halloween, um, I'm kind of getting this other vibe here, um, you haven't done your job. So appropriateness is a big deal. Um, I'll just take something as simple as like a bank um, where we go, if someone looks at your design for that, whatever it is, a web ad, web design, um, magazine ad, they should look at it and say, I bet you that's a bank, even if you were to take the name off of it. Um, so appropriateness is a, a big part of design style. This next one I just love um, because it looks like it took a lot of work and I really appreciate the cleverness here and the extra work it took. Um, this is a packaging of late July organic classic rich crackers. Um, but what they've done is they have done their due diligence and they've done some research. Um, so let me jump down to the bottom here and I'll show you a little bit. Um, here this late July. Um, what they have done is these designers have chosen to take this and kind of harken back to the days of yore um, <clears throat> with something from the late 1800s. So they have the packaging design itself is really inspired by George Surratt's um, Sunday Afternoon. Um, if you're a fan of Ferris Bueller's Day Off, you'll see this painting in there. Um, last time I saw it and sat in front of it, it was in Chicago. And <clears throat> everything here, the design of the packaging, um, really resembles design and typography choices from 1880s um, posters. And the illustration of the little boy here at the, the park is Pointillism, and this is something that George Surratt was known for. And this is um, a close-up of the packaging. You can see everything is done with little dots kind of overlapping each other. There's a few little brush strokes in here. But it's a very abstract kind of drawing when you get up close to it. And then here we look at Sunday in the Park, where they basically just took a bunch of uh, the Pointillists. They took a bunch of dabs of paint. And as you back up, you form pictures and your eyes start to fill in the colors together. Um, here's a poster of an 1880s um, poster selling, I don't know, what are the Fleischmann's here? I don't know what they're selling here. Um, and maybe it's just uh, these, maybe it looks like meat or crackers here. Uh, so anyway, that's not important. But if you look at kind of the ribbons in here and the type with the sharp ends on here and kind of swirling type, um, all of that really has gone into influencing this type of a look. Some of this type even has a feel of kind of Art Nouveau, um, the Alphonse Mucha paintings with the flowing women with the hairline or with the hair and the flowing hair. Um, has that kind of feel around the same period as well. So I appreciate the effort that goes into this packaging because there's a little bit of historical research that went into it and hiring an illustrator that could mimic that style uh, as well. And their packaging, a lot of their packaging looks like this. It's pretty cool. Okay, so we won't go through everything here. Um, this, I guess I'm showing you here, Subway's website. This is from 20, 2020. So you can see they have changed their website. If I go back down, I have a screen capture of their 2015 website here. And this, you can see, uh, probably the biggest change from, from my eye 
would be that this one didn't look very mobile friendly and they were probably even a little bit behind the times. Um, so it did focus on some of the ingredients. You have the main product here. Uh, it's kind of cluttered. There's a lot happening here. So we fast forward five years and this screen capture much more minimalistic. Um, you only have a couple of titles up here um, for tabs, white background, one main image up here. A lot of focus on their food, a lot of focus on fresh values, um, <clears throat> ordering now, but a lot of um, kind of this natural feel where just the wood here sitting on these, these pieces of wood planks. Um, here kind of going through a lot of different things that they do. Nice chunking of information here in kind of a Mondrian layout type where you have um, rectangles and squares everywhere with the big white separations here. But nice chunking of information. Um, so this design style really helps to deliver a whole bunch of different messages um, in small little chunks. But again, the message is still focusing on the simplicity of the food, the food, the food, the food. Um, they really get into ordering online. Um, I see they have delivery options. I believe, yeah, they, they put this up here, get delivery here on some of these kind of new um, food delivery options that are available to us. More of this kind of Mondrian layout where it's a rectilinear feel here. Um, rectangles and squares all separated by the white and delivering now this does focus a little bit on the ingredients, not as much as they did before, but to get more into the stewardship and the emotions of what they do, here they're showing how they're connecting with local farmers and making that change for fresh food um, together. I'll kind of let you go through some of these other examples of style. Um, this is one's kind of interesting. Have you ever been to uh, Ed DeVibic's? Um, Debevix, sorry. Uh, <clears throat> this one's in Chicago. I ate it one in um, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, a couple years ago. The whole idea behind this is, is they have these kind of 50 styles waiters and waitresses that are sassy and they make fun of you. Um, but it's all in good humor. That's why you have a little boy laughing here. Um, but what I'd like to point out from our standpoint of design style is someone has done a little bit of research and looked up how can I make this look like the 1950s? The shapes back here and this kind of looks like an old 1950s logo. The colors and using the teal um, all the way down to the architecture and design in the store back, in, back to 1950s. Uh, I think they have rebranded, but I hang on to this because it's a really, really good example of um, someone theming a restaurant with a design style that kind of, um, again, harkens back to the 1920s and the silent film. They're using Rudolph Valentino here. That's this gentleman here, popular back in the day. Um, but all the choices that the designer made are from them. And by the way, this was a barbecue rib joint, kind of a restaurant um, in Uptown, uh, Minneapolis, kind of over by the Basilica and Walker Art Center. Um, but they chose a typeface from this, kind of this Art Deco Roaring Twenties typeface. Everything they chose in the center here, center here is black and white to kind of go back to that theme of black and white movies that he was in. You have kind of the revisiting here of the the leaves here from kind of Art Nouveau, a little bit earlier than the 20s, but still around that time. You have the old theater, thinking about uh, the old black and white movies, the old theater curtains here with kind of the brocade or embroidered um, curtains. So lots of things the designer had to take into account, but they did a nice job matching the design style and um, making this contemporary restaurant look like the 1920s. So more examples here as you go through of Halloween style. Massive kiosk here, um, kind of an end cap. More examples of natural and organic. Minimalistic, using raw packaging here, the paperboard, single or two colors on there, um, make everything look a little bit more natural. Some of these are just beautiful. This bottle could have been bright, bright white, but they chose kind of this um, off-white oatmeal color. 
Here again, uh, like we talked, typefaces that are drawn by hand or look like they're drawn by hand makes it look more natural. Simplistic view of the dog. This could have been a photograph, but they chose to go with a, a kind of a simple um, abstract illustration. High contrast. Here again, a uh, type that has been drawn by hand and watercolored. Um, it all matches, goes together nicely. Nice design style. All right, and I think um, here's some more late July stuff. I think we'll end there. And this is just kind of a quick recap. Design style, it's pretty simple. It's you communicating a message to a target audience using your type, art, photos, video, but taking that message and putting a visual style to it that further helps to deliver the message and enhance the message so people not only see it in the words and read it with the words, they get it with all of the art and the elements that you use to design with. So thank you.